Welcome to Impact Moment right here on DC TV. I'm Alvin Jones, and today we are still social distancing, but we're going to get real close on issues that are important. One of the issues that's really important for a lot of people, especially in urban areas, is what's called food apartheid. And that has to be dismantled. And the lady that I am right here with, we're social distancing, but we've been <laughs> close already. Sam Welser with the uh, Common Good City Farm, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Now, who came up with the term food apartheid? Um, so Karen Washington, who um, used to run an urban farm in Brooklyn, New York, turned, coined the term food apartheid because she felt that uh, food justice or food security didn't really reflect the the accuracy of how we came to the situation that we're in now, which is that the food security problems that we have um, were absolutely intentionally created to marginalize people of color in our cities and, urban, and rural communities. Um, and so food apartheid really tries to get at that um, and at the need for us to do more than just uh, provide access to food for people, but really that we need to dismantle the systems that got us to the place where we are now. Yeah, food is fuel. And most people would not put terrible fuel in their car, but they would put terrible fuel in their bodies. Our food cultures now reflect the histories of oppression that people have gone through. Um, particularly, you see this in communities of color where folks like historically were given the worst things to work with. You mean like chitlins? <laughs> right, but still managed to, yeah. right, right. to create amazing, delicious, rich culinary histories. Which um, are now called delicacies for some reason, yeah. <laughs> well, it's amazing food and I, and, and I think that that speaks to the resilience of, of um, people who have been marginalized. And what we want to make sure now is that families in cities and families who come from marginalized communities can get the food that they want and need to make sure that they can both feed themselves and their families but also so they can make healthy choices if that's what they want to do. What's the look on the face, be it a youth or someone who's of, of age, when they share some food that they've grown mm. with a friend or a neighbor? Yeah, I think the one of the best things that we, we usually get to do on the farm is have community meals together. And so we get to share the food that we've grown with all of our neighbors and friends. Um, but I think you're, you're really getting at it, which is that someone who has grown their own food, just that spark of delight and joy and satisfaction at having produced something themselves, um, is really amazing and what I hear from a lot of folks who are interested in getting into gardening is that they want to be able to provide fresh and healthy food for their families um, and that the first year you know maybe it doesn't go so well but they get like those two zucchinis or that one <laughs> little tiny watermelon and right. that is enough that is enough to get somebody started so that they are they are ready next time they're gonna do better um, and they're ready to just give it everything that they've got and see what they can get. There are probably people watching right now, like, like that person right there, <laughs> who wants to know more about the Common Good City Farm. How would they find out more about you and your organization? So we have a really beautiful website that shows you all sorts of lovely pictures of the work that we do. Uh, we're at commongoodcityfarm.org. So there you have it. It's the Common Good City Farm. And, and the name says it all. For the common good, we have a farm in the city because we're attacking food apartheid. Sam Wilson, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Alvin. We're bringing you information that's good for you. It's called Impact Moment right here on DCTV. I'm Alvin Jones. Thank you. Uh -huh.